I want to talk to you about a problem today. Uh, I'm going to use one specific example of this problem, uh, but this is a very pervasive problem that is happening in almost every corner of this planet. And somehow we seem to be either oblivious to it or perhaps more dangerously indifferent to it. We'll call this the elephant in the room. I had my eyes first open to this problem in 2010 when I visited Tanzania as part of a trip abroad to study animal behavior. My experience there, however, was something far greater and much more life-changing. And this problem is very much related to the reasons that I fell in love with East Africa. There are so many reasons that I love East Africa. One of them is the, the scenery, the picturesque, beautiful landscapes. I get to witness the most beautiful sunrises and sunsets through the baobab trees. I love seeing this immense amount of wildlife, this incredible amount of biodiversity in the national parks and protected areas. A variety of colorful birds and insects hovering over lush grasslands dotted with unusual looking trees. Hoofed animals in mass, huddled groups of zebra and impala, buffalo, wildebeest, waterbuck, all munching on grasses. I love driving along, chatting with my safari driver, trying to learn bits and pieces of Swahili, and looking out the safari car window across endless plains at sandy roads that give way to rich red soils, a beautiful base on a canvas of rifts. But the one part I love the most, the one most important member of this community, is the elephant. I'll never forget a conversation I had with a young Kenyan woman named Gaytrude. She and I were working together in the summer of 2015 with a group called Save the Elephants. She and I were discussing similarities and differences between national parks in the U.S. and national parks in Kenya. And she was asking me about what sorts of animals are found in the national parks in the U.S. Well, the national park that I most relate to the places that I have been in Kenya and Tanzania is Yellowstone National Park. Having never been there myself, I was still able to uh, list some animals for her, elk, moose, bear, wolves, larger animals that mimic the wildlife found in East Africa. No elephants, she said. No elephants. Her reaction was one of absolute shock. And my initial reaction was, how could she not know this? But as I thought about it more, it started to make sense. Americans do not interact with elephants on a daily basis. We do not worry about chasing them out of our gardens. We're not worried about them eating our crops, our livelihood. And so, as I thought about it, I had to wonder if she was truly naive to the fact that North America is devoid of elephant-like creatures, how often does the average American think about the African elephant? Are we truly so far removed from nature, from biodiversity, that provides us with so much that sustains life? And so, as I started thinking about a world without elephants, it made me very sad because I realized in a lot of ways we already are. And so to address this question of what does a world look like without elephants and what does the future look like of these wild places, I think that we first must learn from the history of North America. This is the Osage Orange. 
It is a large fruit, one example of a tree that at one time was found throughout much of North America, ranging from Ontario to the Deep South. The species is now only found in a few places in the Southeast United States. Its geographic distribution was greatest around 10,000 years ago, when the land was dominated by megafauna such as woolly mammoths, ancestors to elephants. Equipped with enormous jaws of capable of swallowing these seeds whole and working through a whole variety of plants to satiate their enormous appetites, these mammoths consumed huge numbers of seeds and as they moved across the landscape, dropped them in the perfect place for a seedling to start its life, protected in a pile of fertilizer. So these enormous mammoths are moving around North America. Mega, other mega herbivores are doing this as well in whole parts of North and South America. And in doing so, they're dispersing all of these seeds. And so in this way, they're acting as gardeners and stewards of the forest, knocking down trees here and there, but replanting as they go along. The last elephant ancestors went extinct in North America around 10,000 years ago, the result of a deadly combination, overhunting and a changing climate. Sound familiar? These, these uh, mammoths were responsible for dispersing these large seeds and maintaining these forests. And since their extinction, we can now measure the contracted ranges of some of these tree species using pollen records in the soil. These mammoths were vital to the spread of these large seeded tree species. Big seeds need big animals to disperse them. Can you imagine a squirrel trying to swallow an avocado seed whole? So what does a world without elephants look like? Well, we know that elephants serve many of the same ecological functions as their extinct ancestors. They provide us with invaluable ecosystem services, namely seed dispersal, especially for these large seeded tree species. I know from my own research that their dung is extremely important, not only as an ideal growth medium for these seeds, but also to serve as a protective barrier. Through my research, I found that seeds that had passed through the elephant digestive system and remained in the dung were less likely to be infested by insects such as beetles. Compared with seeds that simply dropped from the trees and lay exposed in the environment, those seeds were more likely to be infested by beetles or consumed by small organisms such as rodents, rendering them not viable. So a world without elephants may hold many fewer trees in African ecosystems. And we may see a change from habitat that once looked like this to habitat that now looks like this. This picture may seem a bit out of order, but the story is actually very interesting. One day we were driving out across Ngorongoro Crater uh, this large open plain, and there's very few trees at the center. It was extremely hot that day, at least close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And we're driving along, and suddenly our safari driver stops and points out some lions that are walking towards us. So, of course, we stop, and several other cars are pulling up to stop and take pictures, and everyone's taking note of these lions coming towards this group of stopped cars. And as they're getting closer and getting closer, excitement is building because these lions are getting so close, they're walking right up to us. Were, you could almost reach out the window and touch them. They were that close. And as they approached the cars, they immediately went straight under the safari vehicles. They were looking for the refuge of shade. They were skinny. They were panting. You could tell that they were suffering. They were hot. And so a world without elephants affects a whole multitude of organisms. 
Various studies across Africa have highlighted the importance that elephants provide in seed dispersal. Studies have been conducted in Central Africa, East Africa, all the way down to Zimbabwe and South Africa. Researchers in Central Africa note that the elephants that are creating and establishing these equatorial forests of the Congo, these rainforests, these forests are so large and they produce so much moisture above them in the air that they create rain patterns that then move across the continent, providing rain for East Africa and lar other large parts of the continent. And so in a way, these elephants are contributing to rain patterns, creating weather, affecting our climate. And so a world without elephants may see shifted or reduced rain setting off a domino effect for worldwide climate. And for a region like East Africa that really alternates between wet and dry seasons, these changes could be detrimental. I like this image because I think it really highlights the importance of the influence elephants have on their ecosystems and their habitats. Imagine that this acacia tree germinated out of a pile of elephant dung. Acacia are extremely important in African ecosystems. They provide nitrogen to the soil. Their roots provide structure and stability to the ground. They can reduce erosion. They also serve not only as a food source for elephants, but for many other animals, such as these baboons. These trees provide habitat for many birds, such as these weaver birds. And so a world without elephants may see a collapse of this ecological community, numerous other animals affected by the loss of trees, the loss of elephants. Elephants affect not only our ecological health, but we can learn from them about our own human health. In a recent study, researchers found that elephants rarely get cancer. Elephants have 40 copies of a gene that codes for a protein that is a known tumor suppressor. It attacks mutated and potentially cancerous cells. Humans have only two copies of this gene, and sometimes only one of those functions. And the research suggests that those individuals are almost 100% likely to develop cancer in their lifetime. What if our cure for cancer is hiding in the genome of the elephant? Currently, Populations of elephants in Africa number about 350,000. Estimates from the 1800s put those populations at closer to 10 million. Over the last decade, what we have experienced, in my opinion, is a genocide. This is the deliberate killing of a specific group, in this case, a species. And the antiquated belief that is driving that killing is being perpetuated by individuals who feel that having ivory is a symbol of status, to have a trinket on their shelves to collect dust. To stand in the presence of an elephant is truly an indescribable feeling. Almost every person that I have talked to talks about this connection that they've had with a wild elephant. And I think there are so many reasons and so many ways in which we can connect with elephants. Elephants are extremely intelligent creatures. They have strong social family bonds. Often, ele elephants are observed passing by the remains of a dead elephant, and they'll stop to feel the bones and smell them and hold them, almost as if they're holding a funeral procession. Young elephants that find themselves orphans without a mother 
perhaps at the hand of poachers, will often be taken in by a family member and cared for. I don't think there's one person on the planet who cannot look at one of those instances and have an emotional connection. So take a moment and look at this elephant. Try to envision a world without them. No more wild elephants. No more nature specials on TV about the wonderful social bonds of these amazing creatures. And when the last elephant in captivity dies, humanity will sit back and stare into this void, this enormous hollow once held by the African elephant, and wonder, how did we get here? How can this be? One of my favorite people, Sir David Attenborough, really said it best when he posed a question that I think we all must consider. Are we happy to suppose that our grandchildren may never be able to see an elephant except in a picture book? Can you imagine telling your grandchildren a story about these enormous creatures with long tusks and enormous trunks, unlike anything else on Earth that once roamed the plains of Africa, and how in your lifetime they were brought to extinction by the hands of humans? There are so many reasons for us to love elephants. They provide us with invaluable ecosystem services, they plant trees that provide us with oxygen, they create rain, and they also serve as a way for us to connect. One of the greatest things in life I have learned, I have learned from elephants, and that is that we need to be more connected to the planet and more connected to each other. And so if I can ask one thing of you today, it is this. Take one piece of this to heart and do not go back to living in a world without elephants. Thank you.